Hi, welcome back to my grow room. My name is Christopher as always. Today I'm going to teach you how I successfully grow a banana plant indoors. Today I thought we'd just break down everything into sections. I was thinking about soil, we're gonna talk about the environment, where to grow it, and we're gonna talk about lighting situation, about fertilization, what are we going to feed it, and we're also gonna cover a little bit about pot sizes, maybe, a little bit about what could go wrong with your plant and how to figure out whatever is wrong with it, and we're also gonna talk a little bit about common pests that you can get indoors when you're growing a banana. If you like this kind of content, please give me a like on the video and also a subscription would be awesome. Let's get started. First thing first, soil. Now, you can't do anything without good soil indoors. Uh, that being said, <laughs> the banana can really take almost whatever you throw at it. But if you would like to know my blend, I use the same thing that I use for, for all my indoor plants. I buy these huge blocks of cocoa and I soak them in water, they expand and I mix that with garden compost. So I buy these huge bags at the nursery and I mix those together. I also blend in a fair amount of vermiculite. I, I just like vermiculite, it keeps the soil well drained and uh, yeah, it, it really makes for, for a great soil base for me. I also sprinkle in um, a good pinch of um, bone meal. I use that because I really like to get the soil started and um, it seems like my plants really enjoy that and I, I don't use any other type of fertilizers in the beginning in the blend of the soil but that's at least the basic. I also have a little bit of rock dust in the soil that's just because I would like to get the minerals from the stone into my soil since we're using soil without stones in the beginning. Uh, it's nice to have those kind of, of minerals mixed in in the beginning. Next up is environment. This is a tropical plant and it requires tropical conditions. So you want to keep the temperature about, about 20 degrees or 70 degrees Fahrenheit at least. I keep mine a little bit above that um, all year long. And if you're, if you're growing this indoors and you have a cold room in the winter time it's not going to do very well if the temperature drops below i would i would say 15 degrees celsius or about 60 fahrenheit it will really start to suffer and it will at least stop growing so uh, yeah it's tropical let's just keep it that way This is really where you can get your banana to shine. So lighting is really important with this plant. It requires a lot of light. And if you want to have something that looks similar to this plant, you're really going to supply it with either direct sunlight many hours a day from a, a south facing window or something, or you're going to have to use some really heavy grow lights. For this, I have been using a 200 watt LED panel for now. It's an old panel and it's slowly dying on me now, so I'm going to switch it out with the panel that I made in my previous video. I'm going to link to an iCard somewhere <laughs> and uh, you can go check that out. That's a 440 watt LED panel and it's going to, to be covering just this plant. <laughs> and uh, I'm, I'm really anxious to see if I can get this to produce a banana uh, or multiple bananas. <laughs> And if you want to have those kind of ambitions indoors, you're really going to need to supply some decent, decent lighting. This plant really is a heavy feeder. I don't think you can over fertilize this thing. I, ha I haven't been able to, at least. And um, I fertilize every single week. I use an organic fertilizer. I can just show you. I've shown it before. Um, not associated with the company, I just love the product. This is BioGrow from BioBiz. And I use that every single week. And for this plant, yeah, I use a deciliter. <laughs> I use a full deciliter. Uh, I don't know how much that's in whatever system you got going on over there in America, but um, a deciliter of this every single week. So what I do is just shake it up, I just 
uh, have a cup, I fill up the cup, throw it in there and then I water it down. Uh, that sounds really excessive, but um, if you want to have something that grows so dense and grows really super fast, this plant is only about one and a half year old. And um, if you want to have it grow this fast, you're really going to need to supply some nutrients for it. I don't think you can over fertilize at all. If you're using inorganic, it uh, might be important to stick with whatever's on the label. But at least for the organic thing, just throw in whatever you have. I would love to be able to use my chicken manure for this. It's high in nitrogen, which is really, really nice when you want to grow something that's green. So you want to grow the green stuff, you really want to use nitrogen rich fertilizer. But um, yeah, after a couple of tries, <laughs> turns out that that kind of smells like poo. And um, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna stick with the other thing. For pot size, I only used two pots for this plant. When I first got it from the nursery, I'm gonna show you a clip from about a year ago, I think, from a video where I just showed off this plant for the first time. This is a new banana plant. Yeah, so it's been growing a fair amount in the last year or a little bit over a year, I think. and. Um, I only used two pots as I said and the reason for that was that first when I got it I placed them in the pot because I didn't have too much room and I didn't have available these larger ones. I just placed it underneath some of my larger bananas and it really wasn't growing at all almost. So when I decided to change out all the huge bananas and just focus on this one because this is a super dwarf Cavendish. I really wanted to see how far I could take this. I immediately transplanted it into this bigger pot. This is a um, 44 centimeter or 17 inches pot. And um, it's going to stay here for the rest of its life. And this is plenty, plenty enough. If you see in my last video where I showed off the huge banana tree that I had or banana plant, excuse me, banana knowers. Yeah, I know it's a plant. This, it was reaching the ceiling and um, yeah, so, but it was still in the same pot and this is sufficient. It, it looks kind of weird, but somehow it just manages. Uh, I don't know why. I think one of the reasons is that I'm feeding it. I'm feeding it like a fat pig before Christmas. And um, yeah, it, it doesn't need any more. But if you, wanna, if, if you wanna go all the steps through the different size pots uh, in, iteration with the plant growing, you're more than welcome to do that, but you really don't need to. This is a plant that really, really manages fine to go directly into a large pot. And um, yeah, just stay there. This plant is a heavy drinker and you need to water this thing. If you have something with this size and in a relatively small pot like this, you're gonna need to, to water it every single day. When it was younger, I used to water about once a week, but now I need to water it every single day. I use about, I'm guessing three or four liters of water every single day. It's important that it doesn't stay in water, so don't water it more than it's going to take up. But if you water it too little or underwater it, nah, it really doesn't like that. And I'm gonna show you. Pests. I've had pests for so many years in the inner grow room and I feel like an expert at getting pests at least. Uh, I've been managing those fairly well, but um, uh, sometimes you gotta lose the battle <laughs> before you can win another one. So the worst thing that I had on my bananas is spider mites. They can just eat a plant like this with ease. If you don't get on top of the problem straight away. I've, I've lost a couple of leaves, not on this plant, but on the other huge one that I had. So spider mites, eh, they're not, I don't like those. Next one, mealybugs. Yeah, the mealybugs was actually introduced into my grow room from this plant, <laughs> from this very plant. So when I got it from the nursery, there was some white, cotton-like stuff on the plant, didn't pay too much attention to it. And um, yeah, it turns out that's mealybugs and they spread like wildfire. So I have still have mealybugs 
here and there. But it turns out that mealybugs only goes on the smaller plants, like these pups. They don't touch the huge one at all. They really don't care about the big one. So um, yeah, I wouldn't worry too much about mealybugs. And they don't seem to hurt the plants at all. It, it, it's more a uh, nuisance and I really don't like the sight of it, but it doesn't hurt the plant, it seems like. Last thing that I had on these plants is uh, thrips. And thrips can sometimes do problems, at least if it get out, gets out of hand. If you get too many thrips, then they might, might damage, I don't know. I haven't had damage on my bananas at all from thrips, but um, yeah, I know they've been on the plants, but they don't seem to do any huge harm, so mm, wouldn't worry too much about it. Last thing is uh, fungus gnats, these small white, you no know, small black flies that just seems to enjoy being close to the soil. They, so what they do is they lay eggs in the soil, the eggs hatch and they uh, develop a larva and the larva eats uh, the roots of plants. So they would have to be fairly hungry <laughs> to, <laughs> to be able to take down something like this. So when you're growing a banana, at least once it gets to a, a size like this, you would be fine from fungus gnats. They wouldn't bother the plant at all, I think. Uh, it would have to be a severe infection of those, but uh, yeah can't figure out or can't seem to... Yeah, I don't think. I don't think they will hurt it. This is a typical sign of underwatering your plant. If it develops brown spots close to the edge of the leaves and it will have this yellow trim to it, this is a, a typical sign that you are not giving your plant enough water. To fix this, you will just give it more water and a little bit time and it will start looking like this again. And it's really not a big deal at all. You will just see the sign and it will, it, it will show really fast. So if you forget to watering, this, this happened when I was away for a couple of days and the plant didn't get enough water this one time. So I got a couple of leaves that turned like this. It's not a showstopper at all. Just give it some more water and um, it will turn back to normal. The only thing is that you're going to have to live with this leaf for a while because it takes the, the banana plant a few months to, to cycle through some leaves and eventually this leaf will drop. To show you what happens if you overwater, I'm going to have to turn to my rose bush. This is just <laughs> a leaf node from my rose bush. This is a typical sign of overwatering. So if your banana leaf starts yellowing all over and it will typically start with the lowest leaves. Every time I've been so unfortunate to overwater, it's been when the plant has been really young and it's easier to overwater the plant when it's young compared to this size. I don't think I could almost be able to overwatering it at this stage. So a good sign that you are giving it too much water is that your leaves are slowly going to turn all yellow and it will fold together and it will slowly hang. So that's a good indicator. Mm, that's not good. So um, just stay away from water for a while and see if the problem fixes itself. As you can see, the banana will put out pups. So these are the small babies. They will come just on the outside of the mother plant. And uh, there's quite a few of these. I'm guessing I have 10, 12 maybe of these growing up. And um, in my experience, I've been growing bananas. I've been trying to remove those. I've been trying to let them grow. But it seems like as long as you give your plant enough food, it will be able to sustain life for both the pups and the mother plant. So um, I'm not sure. It looks nice. Maybe you will let me know in the comments if I should remove these and repot them, have more banana plants, or if I should just keep it this way. It looks kind of nice. Uh, I hate to mess this up. <laughs> okay. 
that was my point on growing my, my banana. Yeah, it, it's my favorite. I have to say, hands down, it's my favorite. This is the only thing that really, really gives me the feeling of growing something tropical. I love my guava. I, um, I had that in a, a previous program and uh, I lo <clears throat> love my coffee. I love you all, but uh, yeah, the banana, it's, it's closest to my heart. So uh, I hope you will try to grow a banana if you aren't already and uh, they should be available. I, I see that so many garden centers are now just having regular bananas. Like this is a super dwarf Cavendish. They, I've, I've found super dwarf Cavendish and dwarf Cavendish and um, they are cheap and really simple to grow. They grow super fast and are so beautiful if you can provide the environment. Okay, any questions leave them down below. This is Christopher saying may the force be with you and um, me and the banana are out of here. Bye. Mm, I love my banana. <laughs>